Next story I have, he talks about thatching. And I myself lived in a thatched house until I was uh, 18. Um, and we, my parents built a bungalow then, but we were, there was eight children mm-hmm. reared in a, in a thatched house. So we knew about the thatcher coming. That was a huge, wow. a huge um, thing to come. And I lived in a townland called Ohakili Maud, which is fairly well known on the shores of Upper Loch Erin. And our school overlooked it. It's now a cultural centre where the Mummers, the Mummers Centre as well. So uh, Paddy would have done a lot of talking in this, in uh-huh. this, in this cultural centre, giving talks at historical nights, etc. But um, thatching is a particular one that's dear to me because I remember the thatcher coming to um, to our house, and uh, it was a it was a big thing. Was it annual? No, uh, annual would have been very expensive. Uh, de- probably depending on on how good the the straw or the rye mm-hmm. was, how long it lasted. Uh, Paddy was very specific about there's things that should have been done to uh, to, to make it last longer, but uh, it would have been done maybe every three to four years. Yeah. And again, the depth of the new thatch would determine possibly, and the quality of it, how long it, it lasted. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it was vitally important. It didn't it didn't leak in on us. But um, as we know now, it's it's a hugely expensive. Oh. Uh, you know, it's only very very wealthy people, or if you get grants for, for it, and there's very few thatchers available. So this story is entitled "Thatching the House in Fermanagh in 1930." I finished school in 1929 in Dramani Moore School at 14 years of age. An old thatcher named of Matthew Green, a parishioner, was thatching our house in Drumlucht the year I finished school, and he said to me one day, I was attending him, that he would teach me to thatch but he, because he was getting old. The first thing he told me to make sure I had a good, sound, straight ladder. He was a very careful man himself. Matthew was getting a half crown a day for thatching in 1929. And all a labourer digging potatoes got was a shilling a day. I thought it was useful to learn thatching. It would be useful to say you had a trade when you went to look for a woman. I got the light job of attending Matthew when he was thatching. I handed up the straw and the scallops to Matthew, when he told me also to dress the scallops when waiting to be called on. Matthew put on three full beds and started another one in a day. Matthew wore clogs in winter, well stuffed with hay, and a bag with straw in it called a, a wheeze, W-E-I-Z-E. To, now that may not be the right spelling, but it was to kneel on in the ladder, obviously to stop your, your knees getting um, hurt. Matthew used a wooden mallet to soften thick scallops if he couldn't twist it. The mallet used to drive the scallop tight into the roof. Matthew told me always put your ladder up straight to the roof. Forget about the gable because it might not be plumb. Same as you papering a room. You level your bed of thatch before you put on any straw. You repair holes in the roof that are badly worn and leave the bed of straw open in the side to make the joint. You put a scallop at the end of every cross runner. That's where you join two beds together and pack along your straight ladder. Make your handfuls even when laying down your straw. Keep your bed at the same depth and keep it Keep, that keeps it level on top. Runners or scru- cross scallops left down straight across the bed about 15 inches wide. Twisted scallops driven into cross ro- rods to tighten down firm. Now, you can see from this, Paddy's uh, style of writing is more like he needed to get a lot said in a hurry. And uh-huh. it's in a, it's sort of like in a... Um, uh, sh- shorthand style, like it punctuated yeah, without being yeah. in full sentences. He's he's remembering it, and mm. when he sent it to be typed up, because it was in his writing, which wasn't it, the, the person who typed it, typed it exactly had yeah. he had, but with the spelling, with the lack of punctuation. But it is his words then. Which it is his words. So good about and, it. And, and if he were talking to you, he would have said the same yeah. because his mind seemed to be rushing to the next sentence. So he he give you a punctuated version of yeah. what was what was happening. Um, but he, he goes on to talk about in, in this um, uh, it, 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 it goes into quite detail but this bit's very interesting Matthew advised me to always steep the straw for thatch in 10 pound of bluestone and bluestone was normally used for, for spraying potatoes okay. to stop the blight uh, I had never heard of it until I read it in this book that it was used for any other purpose so you, you soak this 10 pound of bluestone uh, the thatch in 10 pound of bluestone in a half barrel of water then let it dry before you thatch. 
That would guarantee that straw to last for 20 years, and it did. If you were thatching with green rushes, the bluestone would help them last. All sorts of roofs, especially along a main road, you could see troughs or dips between the beds of straw, and the water would run down between the beds. An old saying was, the drop follows the scallop. I've often heard that's a very common expression. I had never known where it came from, that it was uh-huh. actually to do the drop will run in the line, the line of the scallop. So it's a, it's a, it, that's a reason for it. Um, so that, you know, as I say, he goes into quite uh, great detail then to, uh, in, in a very, very lengthy way. Um, he goes on to talk about um, the different kinds of sally rods or the, the, to make the scallop, or the different kinds of uh, branches that were made to, into sally, uh, scallops. He said you have white sallies, black sallies, yellow willow, egg bush, whins, and buckle briars. I was speaking to a professional thatcher from Donegal who teaches thatching and was on television and thatches at Belfast Museum. This man told me he thatched with briars in Donegal because sallies won't grow on rocks. Uh, rye straw is best for thatch if it's poisoned in bluestone and again its lifespan is 20 years if the house is heated. We have a straw rope in our collection. So this is the collection of stuff that he had in the museum, that in his wee museum that's now in the county museum. We had a straw rope in this collection that's 200 years old. It came out of an old thatched house. The rope was tying one of the ribs in the house and the rope was at the end near the old fireplace and that's what preserved. Yeah, so, like, you know, so that was in, yeah. in, incredibly interesting. 